For this exercise, we're going to go through and do an assignment. This is going to be the blood glucose control for a type 1 diabetic. So just follow these links and you'll see a little bit of information about the problem here and why it's so significant. We also have a model. And so the very first thing we're going to do is determine a first order plus dead time model and then fit some, uh, you know, the KP, tau P, and theta P. And we also have these disturbances, so breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And we'll see that the glucose levels go, you know, we need this insulin injection uh, to be able to change throughout the day to be able to help this diabetic patient. So we'll determine an initial PID tuning, implement the PID controller, and then tune it. So this is similar to some of the other applications we've done. In this case, I'll get, I've given you these 24-hour uh, simulation code. So I'm going to just grab this one first of all. You can see the disturbances due to the meal. And let me just click the get code. And if that doesn't work, like in this is Microsoft Edge, sometimes I just have to switch to a different browser to get that to uh, pull up the code. So if that happens to you, then just pull up a different browser and go to the get code again. And then you should see it in text there. So I'm going to grab this and um, I'll just put it here on my desktop. Okay, and this is our diabetic.py. I'll get rid of the .txt and then just paste that code there. And this will give us our, let's see, this is Python 2.7. Let me actually do 3.6 just because most of you are probably using 3.6 right now. Okay, so again, just running this gives us this, um, you know, this profile. Now what I want to do is, uh, first of all, see if I can come up with a, um, a process model to help me tune some PID uh, tuning correlations. So first thing I want to do is come down here. I have the insulin step right here and um, I have my meals okay and then let me just say that uh, you know I've got I've got all those meals and I've got my disturbance there and so for this one I'm just gonna get rid of my meal disturbances and just plot and see what happens just with the step in the insulin okay so I have my glucose went up let me just maybe do this just a little bit larger so that we can see uh, what's going on here. I have uh, 2.0, but let me reduce that down to 2 micro units per minute. And then I'll run this again. And it looks like this is millimoles per liter. I need to fix that. Okay, so millimoles per liter. And this is actually milligrams per deciliter. Okay, so I was confusing the inside the U.S. One for the outside the U.S. units of measure, typical units of measure for glucose. So I'm just going to fix that there, milligrams per deciliter. Okay, so then if I run it again, okay, here is uh, more of a step response. So I have it going down by one, and then I can pick out the KP, tau P, and theta P. And you could use either optimization or you could use a graphical method. Uh, in this case, I have a negative one on the delta U, and I have about a positive, um, hmm, what is that, 85 or 75 to, let me just find out what those numbers are here. Um, I can just come to, it saved a data file for me right here, and here is the raw data. The first column is time, second column is insulin, and the third column is the uh, glucose level. And so I can just copy that, for example, into Excel. And then paste that in there. And then I'll be able to get some maybe better numbers here. Okay, and then I'll just do data text columns. It's delimited uh, by the comma and then I'll finish. Okay, so there I have my data, and I just want to look at the change. So there's my final value. Okay, so my delta Y equals 
this, and uh, then my delta u was uh, equal to negative negative one, and so my gain is going to be equal to delta y over delta u. Okay, so it's about negative 36. And then the other thing I want to look at is where it gets about 63% of the way there, 0.632. Um, so I'm going to look at how far it has, uh, see, I'll multiply it by 63%. So I'm going to look and see where it gets to about 22.9. Uh, more than the base value and so the base value was this and then I'm going to add 22.9 so I want to look see where it gets to about uh, 99 okay and so if I just come down here um, if I could plot this as well here's 99 right here and that happened at about 3.5 hours and it looked like the step happened at about 1. Uh, 1.7. Okay, so my time constant is going to be how long it takes to get 63% of the way there. And so that was, um, let's see, let me trace this down again. 3.5 equals 3.5 minus, and in this case, it's going to be uh, the step happened at 1. Point, about 1.7. So this doesn't need to be incredibly accurate, but that's about the time constant and the gain is going to be about negative um, 36.2. Okay, so there I have some initial values for kp tau p. There wasn't much theta p. Uh, the dead time, so maybe 0 0.1 hours, uh, not a lot, but I can use these three right here to come up with initial tuning values for a PID controller. And so to get that, I'm just going to come to the course website, if you want to com slash PDC. And then here on the right, I can come up with my PI controller. Okay, so here's some IMC tuning correlations. And the moderate tuning, that's going to come to about, uh, KC is going to be about 1 over KP, and tau I is going to be equal to tau P. So let me just come up with my KC value. It's going to be equal to 1 divided by KP. And then my tau P, my uh, tau I is going to be equal to tau P. Okay, so that's just some basic, basic tuning just to get us going. And um, don't forget the units on this. This one is going to be KP is going to be milligrams per deciliter per micro units per minute okay and then these are going to be in hours and this will be in hours that will be in hours and this will just be the inverse of what we had for the kp so that'd be micro units per minute per milligram per deciliter okay so we have our we're armed with our initial tuning values for our controller and so now let's go ahead and see if we can implement that okay i'm going to go ahead and get rid of this and I'll go ahead and open up the simulation of the diabetic patient again. In this case I'm going to add back in the disturbance. So let's see I commented that out um, and so let me go ahead and just uh, add that back in. I have my diabetic. This is the simulation right here of the diabetic patient. I have these uh, five differential equations that describe the dynamics of the blood glucose and how insulin relates to that. And then uh, I've just basically set up my initial conditions right here. There's my steady state uh, insulin injection rate. And uh, you know these are steady state for the disturbance. Um, yeah, these should be... Uh, Okay, let's see. On the final simulation time is 24 hours. I think the units probably aren't right here as well. That's not millimoles per liter. That's uh, milligrams per deciliter. Okay, and then um, here's the sample time as well. How many uh, sample points I want. 
And then we also have some, you know, storing some of the results just for plotting right here. So I just create some new arrays and uh, initialize those. And then here's my step response for the insulin. Now for the PID controller, we're going to be basically replacing this with a PID equation. And that will allow us to uh, be able to calculate based on this PID. Okay, we have our meals as well right here. And I commented that out, so I'm going to put the meals back in. And that's just the disturbance of the glucose. Okay, if you switch this to animate true, then it's going to animate this. Uh, it'll take a little bit longer, but um, it's kind of nice to see that sometimes. So I'm going to just start with, um, you know, kind of a starting point for a PID controller. We've developed multiple of these at this point. And so, you know, if you'd like to come into PID, for example, down here, at the bottom, there should be some sample code. And this will help us implement a PID controller um, kind of using some of these, this default structure here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this. Mm, there we go, I'll just copy that. These are all gonna be storage for some of the PID parameters. Okay, and I'll just put that in right before the main loop there. I've got my output, my PV value, my air, my integral of my air, my derivative of the PV, and the PI and D values, and then my set point as well. So my set point, maybe I want that, um, let's just set that to be ones, and then I'll multiply it by 80. Okay, so that's just gonna be my set point I'm not going to really deviate uh, from that. And then the only thing I need here is, uh, you know, here's my PID tuning. Kind of come back to my Excel sheet. Let me just go ahead and copy these out just so I can have them here. And I'll start with those values. Okay, there's my KC value. My tau i is going to be 1.8. And my tau d 1.0. Okay, I have some upper and lower limits as well. Uh, now this is on the insulin injection rate. That's the output high and output low. Okay, let me come back here and just grab the other part of the PID code. The very first thing when we go through a loop is we want to calculate the error, then the derivative and the integral values, and then the PID. Look and see if it's there's anti if it's the uh, controller's wound up, and then calculate with the new process, uh, you know, the new output there. Okay, so let's just go ahead and copy this code in, and this will be our PID. There's our time step. I'll just leave that at the top. Okay, my error. Um, you know, I've got my glucose level, and so that's the PV at step I it is going to be the glucose level at uh, I, okay, I have my set point at I as well. There's my derivative term, there's my integral term. I get my proportional, my integral, and my derivative, and then I just calculate my output. If it's above the output high, then I set it at that limit, and I take away that integral action there that was added to the integral, so that's the anti-reset windup. Okay, and then the final thing that I need to do is just say ui plus one, the new, uh, that's gonna be from the output. Okay, let me just see if that, this will run. This is kind of fast, I haven't verified this. Yeah, okay, delta t, I need delta t. I'm just gonna do t i plus one minus t i. Okay, and let's just see if this will run. Okay, so it did run, but I forgot one thing in here, and it caused kind of a spike right at the beginning. Let me see if I can go back and fix that. I forgot to do the U bias uh, value. That's just going to be kind of my initial, uh, my OP0 value. And so instead of zeros here, I'm just going to do that as ones and make that equal to whatever the u0 value was. 
Okay, let me try that again. Okay, so we have a controller, um, at least a starting one. It tries to drive to 80 all the time. We have these disturbances where we have the breakfast, and you can see the insulin level spike up there and then come back down and then uh, regulate again. This one comes up, back down, regulate. So every time you have a meal, the controller tries to respond. And there you can see the insulin uh, concentration in the body as well. So we've implemented a PID controller. Now one of the things you can come back and, and do is, um, you know, with this controller, you can start to adjust some of the tuning. So let's say, oh, I kept that at one, didn't I? Um, let me put that to zero because I initially said that was going to be zero. Let's just see how this does. Okay, so not quite as well. Um, let's just go ahead and turn up that derivative term a little bit and let's make this a little bit more aggressive as well. I'm going to put my tau i at 0.5 and then maybe I'll double my gain as well. Okay, so this would be the process of tuning. You see it maybe goes too low right here. We don't want to go below that lower limit. That's kind of a danger limit. Um, so let's let's add back in that derivative term and let's see how well we can do. Okay, this is uh, much better. It goes all the way up to the maximum of 10 for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Kind of stays in this range, doesn't go too low. It's able to respond quickly. It sees the derivative of that and uh, reacts appropriately. So this is, um, you know, this is just a case where we've implemented a PID controller. The final part of this exercise, the one thing I wanted you to do as well in this is, is go ahead and once you've gotten your, your best tuning that you can come up with, I want you to try to create a matrix of different values uh, where you double the gain and take half of the gain and double the time constant, take half of the time constant and then just see uh, what it does to your control performance. So um, go ahead and uh, try that. Go ahead and uh, you know create this matrix and there's a little bit more information on that tuning sensitivity guide right down here.